Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of ASM 101. Today I'm going to be going over the top 10 basic level hand tools that you should be carrying with you at all times. Again, I appreciate you being here. Thanks for clicking on. It should be a good video. Hey guys, Alex Prothman here with ASM 101. Uh, you've clicked on this video to find out what sort of tools are needed to perform the job of an architectural sheet metal worker. So uh, let, let's get right into it. Okay, number one on the list is the drill. Uh, I use an impact drill with a five amp hour battery on it. Lots of life, lots of power. Um, the bit itself, two to three inch long bit. I find that to be the most effective. I've used short ones and I've used long ones, but this is definitely my go-to. So um, definitely get into this setup. It'll it'll help you immensely. Two on the list, got the, the bit holder. May seem a little insignificant even to mention, but I'll tell you um, in terms of organization and efficiency, being able to just reach in and grab those bits right away without even having to look for them is a huge time saver. So that's uh, definitely an essential part of the tool collection. All right, guys, number three on the list, we have a measuring tape. Um, it's again, very basic level, but you're definitely gonna be carrying these with you throughout the duration of your career. So definitely invest in something high quality. Uh, a 25 footer will be just fine, as well as uh, a nice sturdy pencil to have with you also. Okay, number four on the list, since we're talking about measuring and marking, is the speed square. I always have this with me. It's, it's definitely helpful in getting nice square lines. Uh, it's also helpful in getting, you know, funky measurements. Um, but yeah, definitely carry these with you at all times. Number five on the list. Now that we've measured and marked, we have to somehow cut the material uh, to fit and uh, we do that typically with snips. Uh, we use uh, reds and greens, 45 degree offset aviation snips. They come in handy all the time. One word of advice, uh, don't show up on site with uh, a pair of yellows. It's a big no-no in the industry. Uh, a lot of the old timers will agree with me out there as to why that is. So again, big red flag if you're showing up with uh, with yellows. Okay, and then uh, number six on the list, we have, uh, now that we've cut the measured and cut, uh, we're gonna have to fold. And how we do that typically, especially on site, are with uh, folders. Uh, the standard folders I have with me at all times, and yes, I have uh, two pairs of folders with me at all times, are just your standard pair of uh, folding tongs and uh, a 45 degree offset seaming plier. The standard folding tongs are nice because they can uh, give me a nice crisp edge. So that's why I have those for more finesse work. And then these guys are kind of more of a workhorse and I find that they're very helpful in squeezing things together. Uh, not so much folding. I mean, you can do that with them, but they don't offer as, as nice of a job as these ones but these also have a lot more power than those ones. So sometimes you need more power than you need finesse. So, all right, number seven on the list, once you have that, those pieces fabricated, you have to sometimes give it a little bit of persuasion to get it into place, or you have to remove a nail, or you have to hammer a nail in, so on and so forth. There's many uses to having a claw hammer with you. A few things when, when getting the claw hammer though is to make sure that you're getting a straight claw as opposed to a curved claw and then also make sure the the face of the hammer itself is smooth uh, instead of uh, you know a hash marked face those are just going to mark up your your finished product and you just don't want that so uh, that's the kind of hammer you should be looking for uh, number eight on the list if we're talking about hammering we're also going to be talking about getting into tight spaces, getting it in and prying. There are so many uses for these two right here, flathead screwdriver and a pry bar that I could be here for an hour telling you all about it. But having these two in your pouch at all times will definitely make the job a lot easier. So, uh, number nine on the list, a standard Olfa knife, uh, sharpen your pencil, cut underlayment, multi-use 
for your knife, but definitely invest in a good one. Don't cheap out, get some good blades. Uh, make sure you have this guy with you at all times. And finally, number 10 uh, is your clamping. You know, we gotta hold the piece in place sometimes uh, so we can work on it. And uh, a C-clamp will definitely help you out there. Uh, I have a, a large pair and a couple small pairs with me. Uh, I usually have these with me at all times. The large pair, I'll, if I need it, I'll take it. But um, yeah, so definitely, so all of these tools, uh, we're gonna put the names of them in the description below. So if you were unsure about a few, you can always rewatch the video and go over them. But again, all of the, the tool names are in the description below and where to get them. So everyone, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video helps you in becoming a better architectural sheet metal worker. And tune in for more videos just like this one. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.